me. Uh, hey, welcome to High 45, discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards the seniority. I'm Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. And welcome to High 45. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. We have awesome, awesome stuff this yep. week. We're going to focus on politics. Politics, politics for the future, yeah. and mainly because of the American election that's happening today. And the rally to restore sanity. At the rally to restore sanity. And all fear. Yeah, and fear. That was, that was awesome. So yeah, just speaking about how that can actually impact going through, and there are a lot of stories. It is awesome. Yeah, you know, I had stuff to cut out down a lot of what we did talk about. Yeah, that's um, pretty crazy. Okay, first one: bogus grassroots po- uh, politics on Twitter. That's cool. Uh, next one is the rally to restore sanity. We'll be talking about that. How that got started. And Google actually, you know, as they always do, mining all the the search data just before the elections. Yeah, I like that. And there's some power in that, people. There is some <laughs> freaking power. Uh, next oh. one is about where the Reaper drones or the Predator drones are going now. All that. And the one after that is Bruce not being able to actually get the beer off. To beer. To beer. I should get a beer too. Sorry, you should go to your last story. I did, I skipped the middle one. Oh, right, that's a short one. Gotcha. Yep. Okay, I'll start off. Um, Twitter. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. I mean, you, you see all the crazy stuff that people have been doing with the Twitter data lately. Like, it'd be great if... if um, cause, if they didn't, you know, get rid of all the tweets, if they actually allowed all of it to be mined and everyone just do crazy shit with it. Because, um... Like porn. Because they've done... St- yeah. Because <laughs> they've done stuff to actually work out, um, predict the stock markets. I think we talked about the that The Nasdaq, yeah. Before. They had it going up and down. Um, and just to predict all sorts of crazy stuff. But anyway, what these guys have done is it's a team at Indiana University using data mining and network analysis techniques, um, they've actually found that a lot of the grassroots, uh, grassroots political campaigns and, and activism on Twitter is bullshit. It's just, it's a few people, like maybe a small group of people that are just creating fake accounts and just artificially sort of injecting these memes and sort of certain political points and poli- you know, different... It, it makes sense. ...messages into the, into the stream. And... Yeah, it, and this must be happening all over the web, but the fact that they can, by uh, using this technique, they can find out what is actually happening. I'll, I'll tell you the technique. What they basically did is they just went on this basic sort of idea that, yeah, so they're, they're tracking memes, the keywords or web links, and, and seeing that, you know, you know, because a meme sort of, it starts off pretty slow and then it spikes as people right. start Well, they've got a lot of different trackings online, like knowyourmeme.com and all that, yeah. and actually say following memes across Twitter and across everywhere. They don't follow, well, they follow on Twitter, do they? I think so as well. Maybe not know you mean, but I know the yeah, ones yeah. out there that actually do follow. Yeah. Well, there's hashtags and all of that. I mean, they're good meme ones. Yeah, yeah to track it. And basically, I'll just read this out verbatim. Um, if the memes came from many... Uh, uh, wait, I'll start again. <laughs> if the memes came from many otherwise unconnected accounts, they were likely to be legitimate. But if they came from relatively small, tightly connected networks of accounts, they were more likely to be, they call it astroturf, so like, you know, fake accounts. Fake grass, yeah. Yeah, just bullshit. And so that, that makes sense. Like, obviously... If you get a, a bunch of unconnected, you know, disparate people talking about a similar topic, then obviously yeah. it's legit. If you get a whole bunch of people who are interconnected, sharing messages and just trying to spam it out, yeah. then you can tell that they're, you know, they're working together. They're, oh, that, they're that, trying to cool, manipulate though, yeah. people's opinions on certain political issues. Yeah. Oh, and, well, it, it has to be happening everywhere. I mean, as if you wouldn't. Like, you've got like a, a tiny little grassroots thing. I mean, even if it is for a good cause... Think, hey, yeah, we could use Twitter to actually promote it. You create a few like fake Twitter accounts. You do it around all the yeah, different yeah. social stuff. You, you push it. Yeah, and if they can get the um the tracking of it, like oh yeah, I mean what the, what they've used here to actually find it out, find what what these people are doing. You could just yeah. grab the same techniques and use it, you know, to even to push it even further yeah. to actually well, find out what what can manipulate people. What is the, yeah, the secret how to, to get it? What is the secret yeah. to pushing out a message and getting it to go and turn into a meme? Well, really I like cool. the picture that you have there at the top. The one about the, the, the web kind of bit, the network. Yeah. I like that picture. Like, if we can display the data in that type of format to show, look, this meme or this idea is just c- correlated within this small part. But if you can say, like what you were saying before, look, yeah. if it came from this part of the network, this part, this part, this part, this part, then you can say, hey, hey our, us average plebs can never see that data, can we? Well, that's the problem. They have all the power with it. But please look it up. Like, Twitter has they it. They can't Google do as it. much. Facebook has it. They're, no. they're analyzing this in the back end day by day, just trying to work out. I, I, I will admit, and I will say on video here, recording this, that I think there is going to be a movement in the future, hopefully very soon, about all openness of data that just make everything, literally everything open, not keep anything like secret. All your financials, all your data, everything about it, all of it. Because it's the same way of like, you know, basic economics. The more you trade, the more you benefit. The same way with data, the more you share, the more everyone benefits. Yeah, but you do it anonymously. Uh, maybe. 
Because you, you can still get the benefits back by sharing it anonymously, but yeah, you wouldn't get it. You'd start it. anonymously, but I think even yeah. anonymously, you'd just get rid of that. I mean, why not? And we can like predict when trains come and actually work out when's yeah, the best time to film an episode. It'd be great. So they'd be, they'd warn us in advance, we can get little messages on our phone, you know. Oh, yeah. There's a train coming, we should stop. It probably yeah. isn't something like that. <laughs> you could go on like trains monthly or something. Yeah. Um, oh, the second thing I was going to just briefly mention because it's cool, but yeah, um, the yeah. U.S. has said <laughs> wait, it's actually it's actually pretty damn important in terms of politics and stuff. Um, the U.S. has just said that genes should not be eligible for patents, which is pretty cool. Like it's not it's not written to law yet, but it's kind of they're, they're thinking that they've made a statement. Apparently, it was just it was declared in a friend of the court brief filed by the Department of Justice. No but, I, I have no idea either. But anyway, it's basically. They're thinking that, yeah, any, it's a part of nature. You know, yeah. DNA's a part of nature, you yeah, shouldn't be able to patent it. It's a part of you and all of that, it's just an organisation yeah. that you... Yeah, you can still get, like, Monsanto and all of that, like, patenting, uh, well, seeds and stuff. Synthetic? Well, yeah, synthetic. You patent synthetic DNA. Yeah, but there's not really much of a distinction. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, sweet. Um, the one I'll talk about now, we'll, we'll talk about the Rally to Restore Sanity later, we'll go to the Predator Jones right now. <laughs> okay. So Rally, we can talk about that for ages. Uh, okay, yeah, well, uh, there's this new, you, you've all heard about the Predator drones, uh, sorry, the, yeah, yeah, Predator drones. The new drone is called the Reaper. The Reaper drone is the new <laughs> one coming out. So you've got the Predator drone and the Reaper drone. And this is kind of a, <laughs> the freaking hectic, hectic drone. Genie name this one. Genie yeah, Genie. probably. <laughs> but uh, this one's crazy. It's got uh, 14 Hellfire missiles compared to the two for the Predator. <laughs> and it's got 3,000 pounds of explosives on it. Like, that, so it's just the Hellfire missiles as well as the explosives, all of that. And it's, yeah, just on my hand flying, flying around. And at the moment, I think there are 30 of them, 20 or 30, I'm not sure. <laughs> and uh, compared to, yeah, 30 Reapers flying around, and there are 200 Predator drones just flying around. And I mean, like, okay, I can... Did, did so without, like, Afghanistan or what? Uh, 80% of all of that, they just passed a million hours of drones actually being flown around. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. A million hours of unmanned vehicles up around, flying yeah. in combat situations, 80% of the time they were flying in combat situations. So that's where they roughly were, I guess, wherever there's combat so, yeah. going on. Now, maybe they're used for reconnaissance and all of that. I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, 10 years ago, they didn't actually have weapons on them, or maybe they're like, just testing them out and stuff. Mm. And 20 years ago, these things didn't even exist. Whereas now they're like taking over everything. They're, they're retiring one of the F, uh, one of the, the, the big ship ones are called, sorry, I haven't got it here. The F, like, F-16s. I think they're slowly retiring like, some of the F-16s to actually put more Predator drones in to replace them with that. Yes. It makes sense, doesn't it? Like, I mean, why wouldn't you use drones? Yeah. Well, it wasn't there, there was a report, it must have been a few years ago, saying that the military by like 2015 plans to have 50% of all of them, yeah. you know, to be robots, to not yeah. to be unmanned. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. I mean, because then you can, you don't lose any lives. <laughs> and it works like you've got better control, you don't get the pilots getting, pilots getting tired, you can train a whole armada of pilots, yeah. get them all just changing pace. The best part is like they've got teams of people, like thousands of people analyzing every bit of data, every bit of surveillance <laughs> technology, and surveillance, I don't know what I'm saying, <laughs> <laughs> surveillance that comes back from them to actually yeah. analyze better stuff. And they've got a, yeah. yeah, they've got a cool video here of how it's actually controlled and stuff. And I mean, the video graphics for like, you know, flight sim and all of that, and nearing realistic levels, this looks exactly the same. It's, no. there's going to be, I, I'll guarantee, another prediction, I'm making lots of predictions tonight. <laughs> another prediction, <laughs> there will be like, back to haunt you. <laughs> probably, but there will be a computer game where it's the exact same thing as a Predator drone. The exact same controls. They'll, they'll use it out. to train up the next yeah, yeah. generation. Why not? It's the best way to do it. And then you yeah. get into Ender's game. I mean, come on, why not get your kids that are just coming like, you know, 14, 15. I mean, they tried it with America's Army. They, they really did try that. Like, you know, yeah. like, see what it's like to be a soldier. Not there yet. It was kind of a lame game. <laughs> but why not do it with this and actually just... No, but those pilots must have some serious, serious psychological issues. I don't issues. know. The, the guy who was speaking on this was fat. So, <laughs> he looked well confed and he was like, yes, I'm in Nevada and I'm happy. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just they, they go home to their family after having killed all these people. But it's not they... killing people. It's the same. You just it kill... is. They're shooting them. It is. But it's not... It's <laughs> just it's not killing It's people. on a TV screen. It's on... Yeah, but it's they're on killing them. Record. Yeah, but it's not the same way as like looking into their eyes and then stabbing That's them. That's why I'm saying... That's why I'm saying it's fucked up because it's, it's psychologically... Yeah, but I don't they... think it would psychologically get them to go, wow, that's gay that I'm like killing lots of people, but you don't get the same feeling. Yeah, they wouldn't care. That's the point. Yeah. It removes emotion from war, which is... Yeah, but they wouldn't be fucked up. They'd, never a, they'd, they'd be totally sane when they should be kind of fucked up because they are killing lots of people. Yeah. 
That's yeah. not good because I mean the entire wars who are just I mean the progression's there, the trend is there that it's just going to be robot wars in the future, and that did sound cool as a kid. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> I love that idea as a kid. But now that I'm actually seeing the robots that the wars are going to be fought with, a little bit more unma- uh, unnerved, like a little buzzing sound of a predator it, drone with a hellfire. It could be why all the US is selling off all their old crappy technology to the Saudis. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sure, six, sixty Have billion dollars. Yeah. It's like, oh god. The US is like, oh, mm. <laughs> oh no, I don't want to say yeah. it. They're just, they're, ho- they're horrible, horrible empire. <laughs> they're, 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 they're up horrible there with, empire. they're up there with fucking Stalin and Hitler at this point. I'm seriously. You just compared the United States to Stalin. And yes. They're they don't think they are, things. but go look, look back at the fucking stats. They have done a lot of bad things. Not, I don't think it's as much as Stalin. Yet. Stalin was pretty nasty. Well, they just do it with technology and no one's the wiser. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so I have, like, oh, let's sell $60 billion of weapons to the Saudis. That'll end up, you know, get the oil. in 10, 20 years, I'm sure that'll work out swell. Well, you're watching a political episode of High 45. I mean, you have to get up in politics here. Is this going to work? Yeah. Jeez, man. <laughs> anyway, um. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, okay, I'll do this one. Um, yeah, I, it's on the Google blog. Um, that, was, that was a weird segue. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the Google blog. Doop, 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 doop. Um, anyway, what they've been doing, because of the midterm elections coming up, they've actually been monitoring all the searches and looking for certain keywords and, and, just, yeah. and, and using that to kind of get an insight into what people are searching for. Because obviously before an election, most you know, educated people, <laughs> or people who actually want to vote for you know, the best person in their particular situation, would go and research it. So they're all voting, in, they're all, sorry, they're all searching Google for things like, you know, uh, even basic things like voter registration, early voting, absentee voting, like yeah. how to vote, all that sort of stuff. But then even more um, detailed things like, you know, stuff about the, the economy, like unemployment, foreclosures, um, and then looking up certain candidates and all their past histories and well, what their true, particular like, stances yeah. are and everything. I mean, and, I, know, I know I did yeah. that. Like when I, I was voting before, I, I researched who I was yeah, actually going. I found yeah. it was an old university teacher of mine. I was like, hell's yeah, I didn't even know he was running. Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, and even things on like uh, Prop 19, oh, actually yeah. actually mapping it out, like obviously, oh. you know, you had a higher uh, search density within California versus the rest of the country. Um, and, then, and then things like about, you know, O'Donnell and witchcraft and all that stuff. <laughs> like, again, this country is like messed up, man. When, <laughs> it's very it's like odd. Watching, uh, it's, like, yeah. it's like watching a circus show. Like ours isn't any better. I'm, oh, not, God, I'm no. not trying to say it's horrid and where you know so much up there but it's just ridiculous well we don't have political ads say where the candidates actually say they're not a witch yeah <laughs> like that's gonna go down in history it's retarded. that's odd very odd yeah but anyway the, the whole the whole point of this which they don't bother to tell yes, you yeah. is that this is powerful google could probably actually predict who was gonna win the outcome who was gonna oh, win the election based off that. based off oh. simple things like searching who has the most searches for a particular candidate yeah I mean, we've been talking about it before, the, how, how social media could actually predict political outcomes, but they could do this in real time. They could, if they actually worked with particular candidates behind the scenes, like, oh you know, my God. very it's underground type so stuff. powerful, yeah. Yeah, so, so say they, say with O'Donnell, for example, say they're working with her and she was paying them a shit ton of money, they could say like, hey, you know, you're down on this particular thing. A lot of people searching for this term, we should, you know, you should try and get a website up. Yeah, ranking. they're associating you with this term, they're yeah. associating you with this idea. Let's so. just dispel that, dispel that. Let's yeah. try and, let's try and push this search term, you know, yeah. or with any political candidate or any, you could even work out, because um, I mean, that's what politics is all about. It's all about trying to find out the, the particular target market, which is the voters that you're after, trying to find out what their concerns are, and then coming up with a policy which fits it. Yeah. Which whether whether you personally believe in that policy yeah, or, or not. Yeah, or if you'll enact the policy, just say yeah. a few things until you get in. So this this is power, power, power. I mean, especially yeah, it's when... It's only going to get larger. Yeah. And we, we've talked about Google with, before doing that to um, uh, their hedge fund. They've got their internal hedge fund. And it, just by comparing uh, news with finance results, they can work out, you know, they're starting to learn... What you, you know? What I'd like though. to see? It's crazy. The the stats for uh, people typing in who should I vote for? <laughs> see what comes up there. See the amount of people actually type into Google because they're like, well, I don't know, like who should I vote for if or something like that. Yeah, well, the the recommendation engine. It, it, recommend- it just recommends who you should. Yeah, vote it's for. just it's not the most search there. That I mean, if you are, if you do start to see a trend.